I'm joined now by Yan Song uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, the director of the program on Chinese cities at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. First, I want to get your reaction to Xi Jinping's comments at this event and the launching of this international center. How important is this? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, so I think the bigger contest here is that uh, um, China has uh, set itself a really ambitious goal of becoming carbon neutral um, by 2060. And this is uh, really a challenging target given it will reach the peak right, um, by uh, 2030. So sustainable transport is one of the biggest part in um, mitigating carbon emissions. Uh, given that um, um, about uh, 25 to uh, 30 percent of the uh, emissions comes from the uh, transport sector. Um, so this is really important uh, to have um, this dialogue in sustainable transport. And a big thrust here, I think, is to help developing countries as well so that they don't fall into this trap that we see with so many develop, developed countries, uh, you know, in terms of the type of vehicles, uh, you know, the smog, all of that. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Um, sure. I think uh, uh, definitely there are a lot of uh, lessons to be learned from the uh, uh, Western part. Uh, but now um, China has been making a lot of um, transitions that could uh, shed light on the, um, I mean, to the uh, develop other developing countries. Um, I will just give a, a couple of examples, maybe four examples here. The first one is the uh, transition to um, more effective transport infrastructure. Um, the estimation is that um, a 10% increase of using high efficiency um, the uh, railroad railroads rather than the r roadways um, could um, um, I mean, to use that to uh, transport both goods and the passengers could result in a reduction of um, half billion pounds of um, carbon emissions. Um, and then the second example, uh, I would say, is the transition to the use of a cleaner alternative energy, um, such as the use of natural gas, biofuel, and um, um, electricity. And then uh, the third example is definitely the behavioral change. Um, we have seen that uh, in the Western part of the world that people um, are heavily relying on uh, automobiles. Um, but um, um, many of the uh, regions and the local uh, cities are making plans in China to encourage um, behavioral change to um, um, promote greener modes of commuting. So people could um, take the public transit, could walk more and the bicycle more rather than driving the um, um, auto, um, the, the private autos. And then the uh, last example I want to share um, is to uh, transition to the new technologies and um, innovations. Um, for example, uh, we could um, now use uh, shared vehicles um, in the future, uh, more and more autonomous cars and um, um, smart transportation technologies in the development of, of uh, uh, smart cities. We just saw uh, Xi Jia's story about uh, these alternative energy uh, vehicles, you know, the EVs uh, and, and the growth and popularity in China. How important is that uh, as, a, as a contributing factor as, as we move towards a, a greener future, do you think? Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic sector to have um, not more to be done there. Uh, China has set its target to uh, increase the uh, sales of um, uh, the, uh, this, this type of new energy vehicles um, to 15% uh, of the market in the next four years only. And it's estimated that the penetration of uh, electric vehicles could uh, decrease the uh, greenhouse gas emissions by more than half um, of the uh, um, carbon emissions. That's, that's to say uh, more than 50% um, you know, by uh, 2050. Uh, this is really a high profile uh, sector in terms of uh, carbon reduction and the mitigation.